Welcome to the office of Dr. Richard Levine and BabiesByLevine.com. Dr. Richard Levine is America's first tubal microsurgeon and has been featured on Good Morning America, The Phil Donahue Show, People Magazine, ABC, CBS, and NBC Nightly News programs, as well as other media from around the world. Patients travel from all over the United States and from every corner of the globe to seek his expertise. Dr. Levine offers one of the highest success rates for tubal ligation reversals at an affordable price. Join us to find out why so many women refer Dr. Levine to family and friends and how he can help you achieve your dream of having a baby. talk about another test for secondary infertility. It's called a hysterosalpingogram. In English, that's the tubal x-ray. Now, because you've had tubal surgery, that's always the big concern with patients. Are my tubes blocked? Uh, did scar tissue grow? Did I do something when I went home that caused a tube to snap apart? Well, the tubal x-ray sort of tells us the answer to that. The test is done by putting some radio-opaque dye up through your birth canal. So we do like a, a pelvic exam, like when you have a pap smear done. A little catheter, a little straw kind of device is put just inside the birth canal, and we put dye through, almost like a squirt gun. We squirt this fluid up through the uterus and into the tubes, and then it flows out into your belly. This test will tell us if the tubes are open or not. If they're not open, then we'll talk about what needs to be done. But this will tell us a whole lot. Maybe one tube is open, maybe one tube is in spasm, or maybe that tube is blocked. People get pregnant as quickly with one fallopian tube as two. It's nice to have both of them, but it's not the worst thing in the world if one is open and one is blocked. You could have this test done back home where you live by your gynecologist, or your gynecologist could arrange with the radiologist at the hospital to do the test. Alternatively, you can come to me. In some ways, I prefer that you come to me because I know what your tubes look like. I know where your, your tubes were cut and tied or blocked, and so I know how far out the dash should go. And quite honestly, it's a world cheaper to come to me to have it done because I don't charge you a penny to do this. This is part of your free aftercare that I offer. If, though, you want to go and have it done locally, then once it's done, I want the radiologist to put the tubal x-ray films on a CD, and I want you to mail it to me so I can look at it and help you interpret it. Frequently, I get readings where they tell me that the tube is blocked, or both tubes are blocked. Almost never is that the truth. In reality, what we find out is that the radiologist did not put enough dye into the uterus to fill the uterus entirely, causing the dye to spill over into the tubes. So don't get freaked out if you get a bad reading. Send me the x-rays on a CD. I'll look at them. We'll talk about it, and we'll decide what needs to happen from there. The front door to the reproductive system is the birth canal or the endocervical canal. There is an opening at the top of the vagina through the cervix and up into the uterus. This is called the endocervical canal. At mid-cycle, there is a mucus that we denote as egg white uh, mucus. It looks like clear egg whites. Sometimes it runs out the vagina and you can see it, but even if you don't see it, at mid-cycle, at the time that you ovulate, it exists up in your birth canal. It's through this kind of mucus that sperm swims to get into the uterus and out into the tubes. Now, pregnancy actually occurs at the outer third of the tube where it meets the egg and then it moves down into the uterus. Well, like any front door, some of them are locked and some of them are unlocked. If the door is unlocked, then you have easy access in and out. Same with the birth canal. When the mucus is good, then sperm can properly get up into the system. Sometimes, though, there are reasons that the door is closed and the door is locked. Uh, that can be bad mucus, just chemically bad mucus. It can also be mucus that has antibodies killing the sperm. And yet again, you can have just a bad doorway where the opening is not good. Now, what's an example of that? Well, some of you ladies have had multiple C-sections, and your birth canal has not been able to dilate and let the baby out. After the C-section, there's blood that comes down that opening that has never been stretched up, and you can end up with scar tissue actually in your birth canal. All of that can keep 
the sperm from getting up there. Well, one of the tests that we can do is called a postcoital test. This is a test where you have intercourse on the day of your LH surge or the day that we estimate you should be ovulating. And then you come to see me two and a half hours later. Now at that point, we do what you think would be a pap smear. You're up in the stirrups, we put the speculum in, and I get a little instrument and I reach up in your birth canal and get some of the mucus. And I actually work my way up. I get three, four, five levels of mucus working up your birth canal. I put each drop of mucus on a glass slide, and I look at that under a microscope to see how many sperm there are at each level, how well they're moving, if they're dead, if they have purposeful motion, or if they're just going around in circles and not getting anywhere. Based on this information, I can then decide, do you have cervical factor infertility, and do we need to do something about it? So it's an easy test to do, it's painless, it just takes a few minutes. The problem with this for some of you is that you actually live so far away that you don't want to make a trip just to do this. And I sort of understand that, but Unfortunately, in order to figure out what's going on, there are things that we need to do, and this might be one of them. We can also make some assumptions. We can assume, because if we've seen that you're ovulating on your temperature chart, and we see that the sperm is good, and we see that the tubal x-ray is normal, we might assume, well, what's left? This lady must have some cervical factor infertility. And what is the best way to treat this? Well, the best way, the easiest way, is to do some intrauterine inseminations, to get a little catheter, to thread it up into the uterus, and to put some of the sperm directly into the uterus. And it has a much easier way then to swim out into the tube. This is actually quick and easy. It's something that I offer to you for free, so we can talk about it. And it's something that we can do when the time is right if you, in fact, have secondary infertility. You can also arrange to do this with your gynecologist or with a reproductive endocrinologist in your neighborhood, but I guarantee you they're gonna charge you probably five, six, seven hundred dollars. If you come here and let me do it, it's gonna be free.